Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a car paint material in Blender 2.8. So first we're going to delete this and we're going to make a sphere. Go to sphere, shade smooth, and to start this off we're going to go to material preview, that's pressing Z, and we're going to go to the shading tab, that's where we're going to be doing most of our work. So we're going to assign a new material here, we can call it car paint. And you can see we get this principled BSCF. So we're going to mostly modify the base color, but we're also going to change the normal and a few other things. So we're going to add clear coat first, which is sort of that glossy finish, that layer on top of the car paint that gives us this shine and reflection. And we're going to up the rough roughness a little bit here. And you can feel free to tweak all these values. These are just ones that I have found out experimentally. And first we're going to work on the color. So we're going to start with a noise texture. And the idea is to have one main color, which is the car paint, and then we're going to have little tiny flakes that give it that shiny glittery appearance. So we're gonna have our we're gonna have our main color here and we're gonna set the scale to this is complete value just found out by experimentation. And then we're gonna go to we're gonna add a math node. And we're going to take the output of this and we're going to check is the output greater than 0.7. And what this will do is it will have a sort of clamping effect. So the noise texture generates random grayscale values. And we're going to use this and say if the threshold is above a certain threshold, then we're going to make it a paint fleck. And then we're also going to do this for the lower threshold. So therefore, we can have our base color in the middle and our paint flex on top. So let's work on this. And we're going to feed this into a mix node, mix RGB. And then we're going to add RGB constants. And we're going to add factor as the mixing factor. Then we're going to have this color is going to be one of the paint flat colors. So I'm going to make it uh, slightly bluish purpley. It's going to be a little darker. And something like that looks roughly good. We can play around this later. And the base color, I'm going to make sort of a dark, dark blue, maybe take a little of the saturation away. Make sure it's not quite purple though. That seems like a good base color. And we're going to feed this into here. So now we've got the lower bound. But now we have to add the other flex. On the, we're going to do this on the other side. So we're going to say, oh, not less than. We're going to say math. And we're going to go to less than. So this will capture flakes on the other end. And we're going to say less than 0 0.3. And then we're going to say mix RGB shader. And then we're going to take this, once again plug it into the factor. And then we're going to put this mixed color up here. And we're going to put the color of our second set of flakes in the other color input. So I'm going to do a very similar thing. As you can see here, I'm just going to sample this, but make it slightly greenish this time. That looks right about right. And then I'm going to pipe that into here. And then this combined color 
if this noise texture happens to be below a certain threshold, then we'll get the green flakes. If it's above a certain threshold, we'll get the purple flakes. And if not, it will be the base color. So we're going to put this into the base color. And if you zoom in, you can see there are a little bit difficult to see, but there are tiny little speckles here. A little bit of green, a little bit of purple, and you can see we have that nice blue base color. And as you can see, it looks around, it's starting to look a little bit like car paint. But the real reason the flex work is because the surface normals are different. So it has very small microsurface details that allow that glinting glittery effect because there are tiny little glitter particles that are facing different directions allowing light to reflect. So we're going to mock this using uh, procedural normals. So we're going to start by doing a taking the normal, a normal map, and this is just going to start and we're going to have this in tangent space so we can it starts pointing directly perpendicular to the surface. And then we're going to have a multiply a math node. And we're going to plug this factor in. And we're going to go to multiply. And this is just to scale the factor down so it's not quite as extreme. And then we're going to go to a mapping, a vector mapping, and we're going to plug in point, and we're going to have this, and then we're going to plug in Oops, sorry, this should be a vector math. So vector math, then we plug this into 1, and then multiply, and we put 0 0.5 for the x. So this will rotate around the x-axis only, because these two are 0. So it's sort of like a mask and a scaling in 1. And then we're going to put this into the rotation. So we're rotating around the x-axis this normal. So this essentially will take this noise factor and it will move the normal a little bit and that will give us a little bit more random of a glittery effect that we want. And then we're going to plug this, the output of this mapping, into the normal right here. And then as you can see we get a little bit more reflective flecky patterns and if we want to change the colors here I think it will look a little bit better if we make this a little darker so you can really see the highlights make it a little bluer and make that yeah that looks pretty good to me you can see we have our environment map here and if we want to make this sphere look a little nicer we can add a subdivision surface and there we go. There's our little car paint tutorial. Feel free to apply it to a car or whatever else you want. Thanks for watching.